everybody, and welcome to Book Break. We are starting our second season. This is our first episode, and my fellow librarian Stephanie is here with me, and we're going to talk about some of the books that we are looking forward to that are coming out this fall. So this is like one of my favorite episodes yeah. when we talk about the stuff that yes. we're, yep. we're anxiously awaiting. And I know that she and I have some overlap, but... Yep. Um, it will be fun, and this will not be just like the big heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. This is going to be stuff that you and I are more interested in yeah. reading ourselves. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. We will mention a couple of those heavy hitters, but um, without further ado, uh, the first one I am going to talk about is called Among the Bros, and it's a fraternity crime story by Max Marshall. And when you see the cover for this, the cover almost looks like a Confederate soldier portrait, but they have him in like a pink button down huh. or polo shirt. I mean, whoever designed that cover yeah. did a really good job sucking people in. <laughs> this one comes out on November 7th. And what the setup is, is a young investigative journalist traces a murder in a multi-million dollar drug ring leading to an unprecedented look at American fraternity life. His name is Max Marshall, and he goes to the College of Charleston in 2018, hoping to investigate a small town like Xanax trafficking mm -hmm. ring. But instead, he found homicides, several student deaths, millions of dollars circulating around the Deep South. So the interesting thing to me is I there's some quotes about pop culture of fraternity life, 80% of Fortune 500 executives, 85% of Supreme Court justices, and all but four presidents since 1825 have been fraternity brothers. So this Crazy. just blows my yeah. mind. And yeah. there's nothing better than rich people mm. behaving badly. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to jump into this one. Um, and also Travel and Leisure called the College of Charleston the most beautiful campus in America. Huh. So I have not seen this one, but um, I'm kind of looking forward to reading it. Yeah, that it, sounds it sounds interesting, like a just like an eye opening, you know. Yes. Um, and as you know, I, I love true crime too, so um, that one will definitely probably go on my list too. Um, but yeah, it sounds nuts. I, do, I don't remember seeing the cover, so I don't think I've heard of that one at all. But yeah. I'll definitely look for it. Yeah, um, no, I I definitely threw this one in my cart for nonfiction. Yeah. So yep, I would have too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So speaking of true crime, um, I guess I'll mention one of my first picks, which is it's called Kill Show, and the subtitle is a true crime novel. Um, it is coming out on October third. The author is Daniel Swearen Beck, um, but it's a novel. But apparently, um, in the story, there's a teenager who goes missing. Um, and then there's like a TV docuseries created about the missing person, um, which is just, we were talking earlier about all these different Netflix series about the different um, murder cases. And it's just like such a big, huge thing right now, um, which is kind of what this book just totally captured my attention as soon as I saw that true crime subtitle. Um, but yeah, so I guess 10 years after the girl goes missing in the novel, um, her family and friends are, quote, ready to talk. So the novel includes, um, you know, there's supposed to be interviews with the family, interviews with law enforcement. Um, and I guess another big part of the book itself is just that it, it's exploring, like, community's obsession with true crime. They, yes. they call it an industry now at this mm -hmm. point. Um, I've always been huge into true crime, just a lot of the psychological aspect. But... Um, yeah, I feel like in recent years they're making shows, all you know, of every single big case out so there. So many and, podcasts uh, uh -huh. and everything. And it's yep. funny because this whole movement has mm -hmm. spawned a lot of mysteries, have yeah. like either podcasters or someone yep. investigating in there. Yo, yep. I'm going to be adding that one to my list too. Yeah, I mean, I, I watch all those shows, you know, I watch Investigation Discovery. So it fascinates me. So I'm just, I'm interested in kind of seeing this author's take on why do people get so obsessed with these cases and these mysteries. So, right. Yeah. I'm excited about that one. This right. is Pew. While podcasts cover a broad range of topics, true crime is by far the most common topic of mm -hmm. top ranked podcasts. About a quarter of top podcasts, 24% are primarily about true crime, murder, scandals. And That's other crazy. I know I don't listen to podcasts, but the only podcast I ever listened to was that one about Adnan, um, serial. 
And I mean, that was crazy. I couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah. I think that kind of was the first big, huge uh, true crime podcast, and then all the other ones kind of followed it. But yeah, it was fascinating. Well, I think we were just talking about the Netflix, yep. you know, Murdoch series, yep. and we watched the one about the the guy in Kansas that mm-hmm. killed his wife. I can't think yep. of what the name of that one is. You read the book too? Yeah, there was. Um, Making a Murderer, that was one of the first ones I loved on Netflix. The yeah. Sins of Our Mother was the Lori Vallow, Chad Dabo. Yeah. Um, Are you yeah. talking about Dennis Rader? I'm talking about the guy that put his daughter in an oil... Well, this uh, oh, we went really dark really yes. fast. That was, and that was a great families. book and a great... Uh, I read the book, um, and then the series on Netflix, Chris Watts. Yes. Yeah, yes. that was insane. Yeah. Yeah. So... Well, kind of going in that direction, and I think you have this on your list, too, so we can both talk about it a little bit. There is a book that is fiction coming out October 3rd. It's called Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. And this book is inspired by the sorority murders and really the Ted Bundy case. Mm-hmm. But instead of looking at it just from his perspective, like so many books, she is... C- writing it from the women's perspective and just how difficult a time they had to even be believed, Mm -hmm. um, how women were expected to behave. And um, I don't know. I found it really fascinating. It says, the way that the women are forced to present themselves in order to be taken seriously, this book should make you very angry. Mm -hmm. There's parts so detailed they make you feel uncomfortable to the point of sickness. This may be a fictional account, but the story is all too real. Um, So yeah, it wasn't, it's not a typical kind of psychological thriller. It goes a lot deeper than that. And um, she is really trying to get the feel of how the women feel in in that time period yeah so yeah that that was that was probably the first book i added to this list just because it i mean it's fascinating it um i also read that it, it has that psychological psychological thriller aspect but that it has like a true crime vibe um it, it you know it, it said it t- took took place in a sorority house mm-hmm. which is interesting because you talked to one about the fraternity so that's just right that's an interesting topic all around um but yeah, that one, let's see, it says, did you say October? I think I saw September. Okay. Yeah. Sometime I, soon. Right. Um, Sometime this fall. Yeah, but she wrote that Luckiest Girl Alive, um, right. which was super popular. She's written a couple other ones. So yeah, I think that'll be a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I read I read her first one. I think it might have been The Luckiest Girl Alive yeah. about the two sisters. The yeah. one sister was kind of jealous of the other sister. Yeah. And she might have had another one, too, in between that. Yeah. Um, the thing I thought was interesting is the title, Bright Young Woman, mm-hmm. is um, it's a title of the play on words of a Florida judge who called Ted Bundy a bright young man. I didn't read that. That's yeah. pretty cool. I didn't so, see that. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Ted Bundy was being sentenced, and the judge actually like sang his praises for being a bright young man and that if he, he wished that he could have been a lawyer in his court in some other setting. Wow. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard that before. It's <laughs> That's like mind boggling. <laughs> yeah, and I mean it ties into what you were saying about, yeah. you know, kind of the women and how they had to deal with it versus Right. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> well, I think too they um it insinuates in the book that the women like they kept saying, Well, wasn't it an angry boyfriend or you know, wasn't it somebody related? And they kept trying to like push their testimony almost aside by saying, Oh no, no, you didn't mm-hmm. see that or mm-hmm. you know. But they kind of figured it out, the woman on the West Coast and the sorority president. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I am really interested to yeah. read about this one. Oh, yeah, that's going to be definitely a good one. Um, I have a lot of, like, dark and scary things on my list because it's fall and because I love that stuff all year. Um, but I also had uh, a little bit of a lighter one um, called Enchanted to Meet You. It's by Meg Cabot. Uh, it's coming out the first week of September. Um I love Meg Cabot. She's been around for decades. Um, the Princess Diaries is what she's best known for. Um, that's one of my all-time favorite series. So anytime I see Meg Cabot, I'm just going to read it regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this is just uh, like a paranormal rom-com is what they're saying. Um, just about, you know, a girl who's kind of trying to live a normal life, but she's a witch. Um and a mysterious man comes to her, and, and he tells her she's the chosen one, and she needs to save her town. Um, 
I'm not a big fantasy lover, but this is kind of like fantasy light, which we've right. we've kind of talked about before. Um, she's kind of known for just like humorous lightheartedness, um, and the the heroine in the story is plus size, which that just also grabbed my attention. I love mm-hmm. that representation in novels. Yes, um, and she's written a couple of novels with the plus size heroine, so I love that. Um, they're just yeah, everything about this book. As soon as I saw it, I was like adding it to my list. Um, and you, you like Meg Cabot, too, yes, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, she and does teen and adult. Right. Yep. It's funny. I added this one to my list yeah. as well because um, another co-worker of ours, Jenna, we both talked about how we're getting into our witchy season. Yeah. Yep. And I love, like, witchy light, witchy rom-com. Yep. You There's know, a lot I, like I that. I don't either. really read a lot of romance, but I like a witchy rom-com mm-hmm. for some reason. So Yeah, that, that one will be good, especially for Halloween. Yeah, I'm definitely getting into the Halloween yeah. season. Get out the cider, <laughs> the yep. cider donuts, and <laughs> yep. pick up that one. Yep. All right. So next, um, one of our Grease Reads authors, uh, E. Tafram, has another book coming yep. out. It was originally, I think, supposed to be in March. We mm-hmm. talked about it briefly yeah. in our you know New Year's yep. kind of preview, but now it got pushed to September yeah. 5th. Um, and this one, I actually read this one on NetGalley, mm-hmm. so I do have a little bit more insight into yeah. this one. Yep. But again, she's picking up with a conservative pal- Palestinian family. Yep. Her main character is Yara, yep. um, and she's trying to figure out her way in life, and the evil eye comes from like thinking of her mother and curse, being cursed, like yep. having her tea, tea leaves red or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, I got very strong autobiographical vibes from this yes. because the main character, Mary Young, as a Palestinian woman, she's from Brooklyn. Yep. She moves to North Carolina, which Etoff lives yep. in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. She taught some college classes, which Etoff yep. did, has two children. Yep. I think the children in the book might have been a girl and a boy. And okay. S- or girl, two girls were Etoff, I believe, as a girl and a yes. boy. Yes, yep. But... Um, Yeah, so it was uh, interesting to read this and think about how she might have, Uh you know, been affected. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm kind of, I like the way she writes. I really loved when she came here. She just seems so authentic. Mm -hmm. And she and Angie Kim are supposed to be in October. We're going to have a podcast edition with them. So, yes. I'm definitely looking forward to, and I hope a lot of other people read this book as well. Yeah, and you know what? I kind of like that it was pushed back because it sounds, you know, like it has those witchy vibes, sort of. It's yes. March would have kind of been a weird time for it. Right, but, right. Um, if yeah. you're going to be doing the tea leaves reading, you got to yeah. do that kind of in the fall. Yeah, so. and you know, it's funny because like a lot of times the authors will say, well, no, this isn't autobiographical. But it's, kind, I mean, it's kind of hard to write a story and not like take reflections from your own life and put it into it. So I think right. a lot of times even when they say, well, well this wasn't true. I mean, you got to think some parts are, are well, true. Well, she even said, I saw an article that she wrote and said due to her, she had such a sheltered upbringing yeah. that it's almost impossible for her not to incorporate yep. a lot of autobiographical details. Yep. But um, she also said that maybe in the future she'd like to break out and do something totally different. Yeah, So we'll have cool. to see... You know, if that happens. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to read that. I think everybody who came to Greece Reads will read that one because that right. book was so well loved by pretty much everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. A Woman, woman is, is No Man, man. Yeah. Was, was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, five-star so. read. Yes. Um, all right, so I guess I'll kind of go back to the spooky side of things just because it's that season and I love all that stuff. Um, and I read about one that's coming out October 3rd. It's called A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. Um, what's cool about this is that it is actually the first novel that's been authorized officially to use um, the setting of the classic uh, Haunting of Hill House, Shirley oh, Jackson. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, The Haunting of Hill House, another one that was made into a series on Netflix. Um, that was amazing. If you like anything kind of creepy, watch that. Okay. Um, but yeah, but this novel takes place at that house, not in the same time period or anything, but, um, apparently it is about a playwright who was writing a play. Uh, the play had something to do with witches again. That's the theme of the day, apparently. Um, so she rents this house and, uh, the actors come and stay with her for a month. Um, and they're just getting the show ready. And then apparently strange things start happening, um, 
so yeah, I mean, it sounds kind of like a typical haunted house story, just with a famous setting. Um, so I liked that angle. I thought that was kind of cool that they, I, like, I don't know if they acknowledge in the story that it's Hill House or if it's, I, I think it probably just uses the house and, right. you know. But it um, was, it sounds like it was authenticated somehow by yeah. Shirley, it's Shirley Jackson, right? Yeah, Shirley Jackson. Yeah. Um, Her estate or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just love a good haunted house story. I think that's going to. It's going to be perfect uh, for this time of year. Oh, that sounds yeah. great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to take us in a different direction because um, also in the fall, don't you think about getting cozy and yep. getting at home? Yep. Um, I have a secret, like, I love that show Hometown on HGTV. Oh, yeah. yep. I don't watch a lot of those shows, yep. but those Napiers, I really love them. Yep. And I like how they take older homes and kind of incorporate the people's families and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not all cookie cutter, the way yep. the houses look. So she has a book coming out okay. about home design. It's called Heirloom ho Rooms, Soulful Stories of Home, and it comes out October 3rd. Um, so her preface is that homes are more than just bricks, glass, wood, whatever. They're the keepers of your childhood memories, your milestones, heartaches, and they evolve as you do. So she is featuring several of, well, her own house, which was her dream house that she always wanted to have in downtown Laurel. And, and also beautiful homes of family and friends. So it's supposed to be photographs and stories. Okay. Um, and, of course, I like anything like Southern Home, yeah. whatever. So, yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. I love their memoir, Make Something Good Today. Oh, I haven't read that. That okay. was really good. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping that this one is good, too. But um, if you like pictures of, I don't know. I always say I want to be inspired. Yep. I never do anything. But oh, I know. <laughs> I know. But I still like being inspired. No, I get it. Yeah, I definitely yeah. I got all Pinterest boards of, you know, cozy interiors and right. HGTV. Hard yeah. to execute, but it's fun to think about. That's right. <laughs> yep. It's a good thing to just kind of escape. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah, that, for sure. that's going to be my escapism yep. read for the fall. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Um, I guess I'll just throw this out there, too, since we're on the nonfiction topic, is uh, Britney Spears' oh. new memoir, The Woman in Me, coming out October 24th. Um, and then also apparently John Stamos has one coming out the same day yes. called it would, if you would have told me, um, I love both of them just cause that was kind of like my generation, like full house. Mm -hmm. That was my number one show. And then of course, listen to Britney Spears growing up and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on with her lately. Uh, yeah. just she's in the news a lot she's got some mental health issues, the conservatorship with her dad. Um, so yeah, that book I think is going to be, I hope it's eye opening and revealing cause you know, we've kind of seen the bad side over. I kind of want to hear her side. Right. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it'll be a good yeah, read. I think that's going to be one of the heavy hitters yeah. of the oh, fall. Yeah. Yep. I'm excited for that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think you and I mentioned, I, I said, well, I should be up here talking about the over a thousand page Barbara Streisand yeah. memoir, but <laughs> that's, that's a little excessive. <laughs> I can't do that. And the other big one is, um. Walter I uh, Isaacson, okay. Elon Musk. Yes, yes. Which I would almost be tempted to plow through some stuff just because yeah. that man is so bizarre. Yeah. You know, he's done some good things, but just lately, you know. He's all over the place. He huh? is all over yeah. the place. So that'll be real interesting to see how that goes. Did but. you see, um, I don't, I've never read Bill O'Reilly, but a, he has one coming out about the Salem witch. Yes. So that's kind of piquing my interest. That might be my first read by him. Yeah. Because um, he touches on a lot of different topics, but. Right. Yeah. Like we said, all the witch stuff coming out, I. Definitely want to get my hands on that one, I think. Yeah, that one will, will be a good one for the yeah. fall, for sure. Yep. I think I've read one or two of the YA adaptations, okay. like Killing Lincoln or yeah. Killing Kennedy. He killed, yep. you know, he had so the many series, in that yeah. whole thing. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty popular. I'll be interested in... It, he wasn't even on my list, but I just it just popped into my head. We're talking right. about all these big nonfiction ones coming yeah. out. There's a lot of good stuff coming out. Oh, I know. Yeah. A lot of good cookbooks, too. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to go through all of yeah. those. But. Yep. So my next one is a fiction book um, by an author I really like. It's The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger. Yep. And that comes out early September, September 5th. And this is um, an author that my book club read 
think it was Lightning Strikes, which was a oh, okay. prequel to his Cork O'Connor series. Oh, okay. And everyone really loved it. Good. And I had read one long ago, I think called Ordinary Grace, yeah. that I really liked. So yeah. this one is a standalone. It's set in the 1950s um, in Minnesota. And on Memorial Day, the people of Jewel, Minnesota, gathered to remember, you know, the sacrifice and everything. And a body of one of their wealthiest landowners is found floating in the river, dead from a shotgun blast. So that starts out this mystery. Yeah. And what um, William Kent Kruger is so good at is the small town vibes mm -hmm. and the people. And he also, a lot of times there's Native American characters in his stories yeah. like because he said the tribes up there are so important yeah. and he really delves into that so i'm really looking forward to this one it's supposed to be like a police procedural yeah. um but very small town minnesota 1950s um yeah and i found out something interesting about him is when he was a freshman at Stanford University in the 1970s, he joined a takeover of the president's office to protest the university's compliance in the production of military weapons, wow. and his full-ride scholarship was revoked. Wow. And he ended up going back to Minnesota, and his life completely changed. That's crazy. You know, working some different yeah. odd jobs, and then he started a belonging in um, like a crime writer's yeah. fiction group. Huh. And then and now he's yeah. a very successful author. That's crazy. Wasn't I never it? heard that. I know. Yeah. I mean, he's he's become such a huge name recently. Right. And, um, yeah. I mean, when you talk about that, you know, the small town feel, I think he his writing resonates with people because it's just like ordinary people, just like the title of one. Right. Like it's ordinary people in these extraordinary circumstances. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's. And a lot of them yeah. have struggles that you can relate yeah. to. Like yep. either family problems or alcoholism yep. or, you know, being prejudiced against. I mean, yeah. there's just something that anybody can relate to, I think, in yeah. his books. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, The that, characters are all awesome. very believable, Yep, like in my mind. Yeah, that'll be a good one for yeah. sure. Um, I can't even remember how many we've done. <laughs> I know. I've got two more. How <laughs> okay, many? Okay, okay. Do we want? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one other horror one. Um, just wanted to quickly mention this one. It's called Hemlock Island. It's by Kelly Armstrong. Um, she's a pretty prolific writer. She's written teen series, adult series. Um, this is a standalone uh, coming out September 12th. Um, but apparently it's about a woman who uh, has a vacation home on, on an island. Um, she's renting it out because she needs money. Um, and... I guess the story kind of starts where she's these uh, renters who are renting the home. They find blood in the house and just like all these creepy kind of weird sights. So the owner of the house goes to investigate it with several other people just to see, you know, what's going on with my house. And um, I believe they took a boat over to the island and something happens to the boat. So then it becomes one of those, um, the trapped room books yes. that they're calling yep. right now. It's like a super big kind of offshoot genre where people are just getting trapped right um and that is fascinating to me so i don't know when you combine the trapped room element the horror the creepy things in the house i just like was all over that book as yeah. soon as i saw it so yeah. uh definitely gonna be one of my halloween reads this year oh that sounds yeah. interesting yeah so my next one is um a memoir and it's called Sure, I'll Join Your Cult by Maria Bamford. <laughs> and I know she is a stand-up comedian, um, but this is supposed to be a brutally honest and hilariously frenetic memoir about show business, mental health, and the comfort of rigid belief systems. Hmm. So from Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence yeah. People to Suzuki Violin Training. So I just thought this one sounded really it kind of gave me the vibes of my, the, mo my um, mother died. I'm, yeah, I'm glad my mother died. I'm glad Jeanette my mother McCarty. died. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of hoping it's, it's along those same lines. Yeah, um, she like also it. struggled with an eating disorder as a child in the 1980s. Um, tried effort about every method possible. Like she had medical debt. So I don't know. It just sounds like... So many different things. So she she's joined Debtors Anonymous, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous. Huh. So 
I guess that's why the yeah. sure I'll join your cult yeah. comes from. But um, yeah, gotta love the quirky memoirs. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds really interesting. It does. Yeah. So, and I love that. quirky. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like why read anything normal right. when you can read quirky? Yeah, I think that's the problem of working in the library. Yes. It's like you don't want anything mainstream. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that sounds like it'll be funny, and I like the, the yeah. mental health aspect. It, it does say the, that it is very funny, but but yeah. does touch quite a bit on these serious yeah. topics, but also makes them very relatable. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I like that. That'll, that'll yeah. be a good one, I think. Um, so I don't know about you, but like I spend you know all of September, October reading the creepy things, sometimes the cozy mysteries, and then like the very next day after Halloween, I just like totally switch gears, and I go from like all the creepy things to all the cheesy, corny Christmas things. Oh, of course. I just switch yeah. it off. Like, I'll be reading, you know, murder house stories, and then I'm reading Richard Paul Evans, who does the corny oh, Christmas yeah. novels. Yeah. Um, so I had to include one of these books just because, uh, you know, uh, I switch right to that after Halloween. So um, th- it's a book called Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. Um, she is a... Uh, a romance author who's who's blown up quite a bit over the last, I want to say, five years. I, that was when I might have read her debut novel. Um, but she's super, super funny. Um, you know, they're like quirky characters, rom-com, witty dialogue, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's not like your typical, you know, romance with, uh, you know, the corny covers uh, with the shirtless guys. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing. Those are fun, too, but she's, her, she's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, but, yeah, so Wreck the Halls. Uh, it's about two adult children of two former rock stars. Their mother, their mothers were in a band together, and apparently there was some big feud, and the band broke up. Um, so they are attempting to get the mother's band back together for some sort of special Christmas Eve show. Um, and, of course, obviously it's a son, and then the other kid is a daughter. You know, their moms were friends. They had this issue. And then, of course, the two, you know, it's a rom com, so I guess they're gonna fall in love. Right. You know that going into you, it. It has to be. Um, but I just like that that spin on it where it's, you know, it's just different. You know, mm-hmm. they wanna bring their moms back together. They were they kinda grew up in the spotlight. Um, so yeah, it just seems kinda like a fun, cute, light thing that I'll wanna read after I'm done reading all the serial killer books for the year. Oh, that is good. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like a nice cheesy holiday rom com. Yeah. You yeah. know? I'm a sucker for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, as soon as Halloween's over, it's like, okay, time to flip to yeah. the, the Hallmark channel. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Gotta love the Hallmark movies. They're my favorite. All right. Well, I think I think I did all of mine. So. But we're going to have to report on some of these that we've read and say yeah. how we like them later. Yeah. But, um, yeah. They all yeah, sound good. the other things for in case you're still want some true crime is um, killing John Bonet, and then there's also one about the Idaho murders that's coming yeah. out as well. That'll be a big one. Yeah, so there's so many good books that are coming out this fall. But let us know what you guys are hoping to be reading this fall. And we will be back with a new episode. I'm going to be talking to a librarian about what to, TikTok made us read oh, that's later this month. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, yeah. Stephanie. Yeah, thanks And for uh, me. I think you are coming back on to do like January previews. Yeah. And maybe we can get you for a true crime episode yeah. coming up. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library made possible through the support of the Friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed.